Hello there everyone, you've tuned in UXW Bill. Many of you out there in the viewing audience have been paying attention to the time of the year as you've asked me if I was in attendance for the 2016 Peoria Area Amateur Radio Club Ham Fest. And the answer, of course, is yes, I was. I haven't missed it since sometime in the early 2000s. I did attend last year, actually met up with someone I came to know via YouTube, and we had quite a good time. But I just didn't really feel like making a video about it, because my video making activities center primarily on having fun. And when a video starts to look too much like work, well, it's just not a whole lot of fun anymore. This particular video is going to be short, sweet, and to the point, because I didn't come home with a whole lot of stuff this year. And I also came to know recently that my Canon FS200's charging adapter apparently got lonely and died while it was sitting over in the broadcast studio, so I'm just about to run this thing out of battery power. Hopefully I can talk about everything I've got in mind to say without actually going to the trouble of grabbing another camcorder. So let's go ahead and get started with one of the first finds of the bunch here. This is a Linksys Wireless G access point, and you might say that Wireless G is thoroughly obsolete in this day and age. And that maybe someone's even been tinkering around and tampering with this unit, because it looks like it might have been taken apart. But the truth of the matter is, these things can run aftermarket firmware like OpenWRT, Tomato, or DDWRT. And despite their age, they are a very robust and reliable platform. They're certainly more than good enough for anything I've got going on around here, especially with my limited Ethernet, uh, my limited internet bandwidth. My Ethernet network is more than fast enough. Then there's this thing, a second generation APC Smart UPS 1500, marked as unknown and marked at $5 for a price. That's my kind of deal. It came with the communications cable, which is a nice touch. And of course, it had the usual dead batteries. These, however, are some of the most grotesquely distorted batteries I've ever removed from one of these things. I almost wanted to say baroquely distorted when I got these things out of the UPS. But I don't think that's really the word I'm looking for. Not sure if the definition fits the if the usage fits the definition, I guess I should say. But yeah, take a look at these things. <laughs> they were replaced in 2012. They're not the originals based on their serial number. Third week of 2012 from the looks of it. But when these batteries go bad, especially if they develop a shorted cell or something along those lines they do tend to fail in a less than graceful manner and I've seen them become so swollen that you couldn't even get them out of the uninterruptible power supply that they came in. But such was not the case here. These batteries actually came out with just a few well-placed shakes of this UPS and it turns out that I found some replacements at the ham fest. I'll take the front cover off of them and I'll tell you more in just a moment. And here we are a couple of minutes later with the front panel removed from the uninterruptible power supply, this Smart UPS 700, showing its batteries. These too were a ham fest find. Ordinarily, if you're going to buy these batteries, they cost in the neighborhood of $17 to $20 a piece when you factor in the shipping. But someone was selling these for $10 a piece for a name brand battery from a highly reputable manufacturer such as GS Uasa. That's an excellent price and these are actually pretty fresh. I still have to do things like resetting the battery calibration constant and performing a runtime calibration on this unit. And then there's the third find of the bunch. This management card that works with APC uninterruptible power supplies such as this Smart UPS 700. I don't know what kind of shape this thing is in. I suspect I will have to reset the password at the very least and I may have to replace the CR2032 battery, as this unit dates from sometime in early 2003. It was probably placed into service around the middle to the late portions of 2003. But this will go very nicely with this uninterruptible power supply. The only bad thing is that it cost me about twice what the uninterruptible power supply itself ended up costing. And yes, in case you are wondering, this thing works perfectly well. None of the plastic pegs on the front are broken, though I do think it's missing some of its soft rubber feet. So I'm definitely looking forward to being able to put that in service somewhere within my computing environment. 
And then, folks, there's this thing. And, folks, this fits into the category of indefensible purchases that I made while I was at the Ham Fest. This is an NCR branded uninterruptible power supply having 1400 total volt amps of backup capacity. As you can see, there are actually two pieces to this unit. And yes, you actually do need them both because the upper portion, even though the front panel appears to come off over here, and maybe it can be removed for some sort of service or diagnostic purpose, it has no batteries inside this. You actually need the secondary unit, which is a pack containing several sealed lead acid batteries configured in series to produce a 48 volt output total. Go ahead and take a look at the back of this thing. Not sure who actually manufactured this for good old national cash register. I haven't been able to find much documentation about this model 4071-2020-7194. My best guess is that it dates from sometime in the mid to late 1990s. It has a bevy of outlets on the back, each one protected with its own dedicated circuit breaker. And then there is an unusual outlet up here marked as Load 3. Looks like this was probably designed for use with 20 amp circuits or 20 amp cord sets, but you'll notice that it doesn't have a circuit breaker. And I'm very surprised by its presence on this unit because it only has about, oh, 16 amps worth of capacity, probably a little less than that because it's never a good idea to load these things up to the nines and expect to have any kind of a reasonable runtime figure. It has Ethernet and telephone protection capability. And then it has this curious panel right here, which I would have thought was for a network management card of some sort, but it is not. I took that panel off, and while it may have been intended for something, Maybe a feature that just didn't end up being designed into this particular unit. There's nothing there but empty space and a metal enclosure, a metal sub enclosure. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in and just see what it does. Unlike the 700 volt amp APC we were looking at, this unit came to me with good batteries in it. It was mine for the princely sum of $15. They had it marked 20. I offered 10. They accepted 15. And the guy, although I'm confident he was joking, said I better get back with my truck quickly or he'd sell it to somebody else if someone else came on and was interested in it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see what we've got here. Oh, it's got a conventional 15 amp cord set on it, if I could actually find the end of it right here. May not be the factory original plug, I'm not 100% sure. But I do know this. Just a little bit short to reach my utility outlet over here by the garage door. So we're going to use as an extension cord one of those devices I constructed some years ago. This will no doubt put the YouTube fire brigade and electric electricians department into a wild tizzy when they see what this thing's intended purpose obviously is. But when you, you know when a building loses a leg of power, sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures. We'll plug this thing up, have a demonstration. All right, I have returned thanks to the magic of video editing and another take. I'm amazed that this camcorder is even still rolling because it's been complaining about its battery for several minutes now. But as you can see, we are prepared to scope the situation out here at Walsh Motors. As you might guess, an uninterruptible power supply of this size and stature does in fact have a true sine wave output. And what's interesting about this unit is it appears to have a good bit more moxie than comparable American power conversion units, most of which will struggle to run this blower fan. But this unit, although it was sold to me with the claim that some of the batteries are weak, seems like it's still got enough poke in it to run this furnace fan pretty well. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it does. We'll let that rev up, and then we'll pull the plug out. And this being YouTube, and Murphy's Law being what it is, either the camcorder's battery will give up on me, or the UPS will fall flat on its face and make a fool of me. There's its output waveform under load. And there's the load that it's pushing, claims to be about 50%. And that motor is most definitely still running. The APCs of similar quality and quantity to this unit 
do have a true sine wave output, but usually when their batteries get weak, they start showing some flat topping in the waveform, some clipping as the inverter's boost stage no doubt runs out of sufficient oomph. But we passed that self-test. So that pretty much rounds out all of the things that I found at the 2016 Peoria Area Amateur Radio Club Ham Fest. I doubt that any of these will be featured in a future video because they're just not all that interesting. But you never know for sure. What I do know is that I appreciate all of you tuning in and taking the time to watch this video. And I certainly encourage you to leave a comment if you have one.